like I've been getting lowballed my whole life, but I don't care because being rich is having free time to me. So, like, I'm having free time at 40 years old is I'm, I, that's as rich as can be. This is the Gold Medal Mindset, where we bring you all things winning in business, sport, and life. I'm Dr. Jason Richardson, pro BMX world champion and Pan Am Games gold medalist. Thanks for joining in. Get ready to mine for gold as we challenge your perception to change your results. Super excited about today's guest on the Gold Medal Mindset, TJ Lavin. Had a great conversation with him over the break audience, guests, listeners, I do apologize in advance. There is some background noise as I recorded this interview while in transit, but TJ was kind enough to do an old friend a favor. So if you don't know who TJ Lavin is, you are about to get a glimpse into the mindset, the true gold medal mindset of this music composer, BMX gold medalist, X Games, Do Tour, and Gravity Games, and now MTV host of The Challenge for 11 years running, a true winner in business, sport, and life. Ladies and gentlemen, TJ Lavin. As you may have heard, I have a podcast. You're on it right now. It's called The Gold Medal Mindset, and it's all about winning in business, sport, and life. And guess what? You, so far, <laughs> we're not finished yet, but so far, you check the boxes on all three of those things, business, sport, and life. So, And we know each other, and we're both from the same town. Yes, we are. And we're friends. And we're friends. Even even better. So how have you been? It's been a minute. Last time I saw you, you were it was the it was the Hall of Fame, uh, because they were inducting your good friend, our good friend Tracer Finn, in the BMX Hall of Fame. Yes, yes, yes. I was very pumped on that. Um uh, Tracer deserves it, you know, and he he loved it. And uh and I had to s I gotta say, man, I'm I'm pretty honored to be in the on the list to maybe get that someday, you know? That's pretty cool. I mean, Think. it's so cool, man. What an honor. I know. I know. Hall of Fame. Yeah, you definitely 40 and above is a Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame age for our sport, for sure. Yeah. It's wild. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it. So, also, I have to thank you uh, because since you've been, since I've been following you, at least on social, I always hit the breakfast spot in Vegas. Oh, yeah? Mm hmm. And Man, I'm, I'm drawing well, a blank right now, but um, what's up? That's all right because what's... I don't roll that no more. Dude. Oh, I, you don't? I, okay, all right. Never no, mind. But it's all okay. it's all good. I go. I go to. I, you're not gonna believe this. What's your new spot? I know you have last a new September. Spot. Dave Mira came and stayed in my house last September. Wow. And okay. Not the one that obviously not the one that just passed, but the one before that. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he came and stayed in my house, and and we woke up. I wake up at four in the morning every day. And it's crazy, but that's just how I roll. It's four in the morning and I'm up. Mm -hmm. And I don't have time to sleep, man. I'm ready to go. And so when I woke up, Dave was up too. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, man, I wake up early every day. And I was like, no way. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, man, every day. I was like, well, let's go. Let's go. Let's go do something. He's like, oh, can we go to Starbucks? And I'm like, Starbucks? I don't go to Starbucks, dude. He goes, no, man, I really want to go, man. Let's go. I go there every day. It's part of my ritual. And I remember when I went there to visit him, we went to his lake house and it was the same thing. And then, and then, so when we did that, we went to Starbucks and we sat there for, for like three or four hours talking about BMX and how we did it. And it was fun and it was awesome. And it was so cool, man. And, <laughs> and, and I had so much fun that day that I would go back and look at the table that him and I sat at. And I still go there every single day. That's so, pretty cool. So, so that's your new ritual. Day, and, I, and I sit there every day at the same tables. And, and like sometimes it might be the different seat than, than he, he and I sat in. But, but most there's, there's only two tables in the place. And he and I sat at one. And then, and then you know, we sit at, at, at one every day. No matter what, we sit at either the one he and I sat at or the one next door to it. And, and every day I get to see him. And it's makes me feel good to him you know what i mean it makes me feel good like oh, that's cool man and so it's kind of a it's it's kind of a tribute to him really like at this point because i'm like i'm not even a starbucks dude i used to make fun of all my friends that went there i i'm completely a hypocrite about it because 
I would always just be like, yeah, you guys are crazy, dude. That is so stupid. And and then now I'm that guy. <laughs> All things considered, you can be that guy. You can be that guy. I think if I had a, a similar experience, I'd, I'd probably do the same thing. And speaking about that conversation, you, it's funny. You guys got up at 4 a.m., spoke for three hours, got out, and it was only 7 a.m. You were probably catching people just coming coming in from being out oh, all night yeah. oh, in Vegas. Oh, totally. But um, I'd like to be a fly on that wall, how you did it, what you did. Because if we can real quickly for the fans, for the audience, I mean, Dave Mira just I, – I don't even know how many X Games golds and Dude Tour golds and records he broke, but easily double digits, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah, legendary. Yeah, I mean, he, he basically was the first BMX – guy to become a household name essentially for sure so so you and him are bros you're having a conversation about how you did it so real quickly for the fans i was there the when you won the first x games in san diego i was there for that but um yeah that was well, sick dude. it was that's sick. one of the best nights of my life it was that's one of the best nights man I yep, and I, uh... I never forget the story you told after that how you rented <laughs> you rented a penthouse thinking uh Thinking some people would come and party, but it was just you and your team manager in the penthouse. Sweet, yeah, dude. That's how we roll. <laughs> but no, how many? What? What's the hardware count, real quick? So you 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 grew up racing BMX. Give everyone the quick the quick rundown of of the the bikes and then the this because I think everyone knows you now as TJ Lavin MTV host. Yeah, well, like like I started off in BMX and then. Uh, the- the, really, my big break was going to stay with Darren Mitchell. So that is you and him to thank for that. And, like, Darren let me come stay with him at Huntington Beach. Darren Mitchell yeah. was, an, was another pro and who actually yeah, we Vegas. went to the same high school from Vegas, and he became a successful pro BMX racer. So you went to go visit him. Yeah, he let me come stay with him. I'm just this 15-year-old kid. Uh, I was 15 at the time, and, and he let me come stay with him. Lawan Cunningham, Brian Foster, and Todd Lyons. And that was like, that's kind of what sparked off my BMX career, basically, because I went out there and I saw firsthand that you can make money being a professional bike rider, which I, I didn't think that was even possible, or nor did I care. I just loved riding bikes. But then when I saw that, I was like, dude, I can hang with these dudes. Like, all these guys, like, I can hang with them. Like, I was a pretty good rider at 15. And then... I got a picture in a magazine and and then it was like I watched the X Games that summer in 1996. I watched the X Games happen and I was like, dude, I could beat these. I'm sorry, 1995, the first X Games ever. I watched him happen. I watched Jay Miron win and I watched uh, Joey Garcia and all these boys. And I was like, dude, I. I, I can hang with these dudes. Like, I really could win this thing. And my friends were all, dude, you could win this thing. Like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't really don't know how to get into it. So, <laughs> so then, so then uh, the King of Dirt happens every year in, in, in Oklahoma City back in the day. And, and Nick Herta, who was my, my bike sponsor back then, Nick Herta was friends with Gork. And then he, he made a phone call, said, Gork, put this kid in. You won't be sorry. And then the rest is history. I won and you that won tonight. that. You won that. Yeah, man. And it was 20 top pros and then me. And then I won. And so I beat the guy that just won the X Games, which was Jay Miron, who got second. And everybody was freaking out. And then I won the Devils of Dirt after that. Daredevils of Dirt in, in Columbus after that. And then the contest that it was a nonstop roll. It was just crazy. Yeah. And, and the timing was yeah. perfect because uh, mid to late 90s, that's – the whole industry just went on an uptick. Uh, bike sales were going yeah. through the roof. TV contracts were everywhere. I mean, we were, we were all doing a, we were all having a lot of good fun on the road. We'll just put it that way. Just laughing, just laughing, bro. Like that's the only word that can explain everything that was going on. Was we're just we were all laughing. It was like, the time, it, like having the time of your life. You're in your twenties. You weren't even in twenty yet, but you, you know, getting thrown money. And they're saying, yeah, go ride or race or jump or whatever, this bike. And we'll get, you know, the plane ticket will show up and you can get a rental car and we'll pay for that. And you can get a hotel and we'll pay for that. And you can get food and we'll pay for that. And then just go show up and ride. Oh, and then, by the way, you'll get paid for that. Pretty cool, huh? And, and, and 
And if you actually do good, then we'll match whatever the heck you win. Ah, so yes. You don't waste the money. <laughs> oh, dude, we'll match that. So just go do what your best. Good, good luck. Good luck. And then, like, and then we just go there and kill it, and then send in the the the, the results and the pay that they owe us, and it's just insane that that was it you know it's it's just crazy i still can't believe it i still can't believe that i got to do that i know we pulled it off and we still live to tell about it so when do you think for you it became real like as far as money and business and oh i might want to actually take this seriously not that you didn't as a kid because it was your passion but but you know there is that that kind of that 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 crossover where you recognize whoa like this is a professional thing I- i'm a pro yeah probably me and mike hayek remember him yeah we, we were driving down to our specialized bicycles negotiation and i remember thinking man i hope i can get 35 grand from these guys and then we walk in there and they were like just ready to like give us the moon and 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 we were like, well, we just need 35 grand and we're good. And like, we, we were, we were kind of a pack and, we, and they said, yeah, no problem. So they just gave us that money and that was it. And I was like, damn, we're making a living now. Like we're laughing. Like, <laughs> that's all we cared about. Like just cause I knew 35 grand, the, the re- where I got that number from was that that's how much dealers made. And so if, the, if you were dealing cards, you were making like 35 grand a year. And I was like, man, well, as long as I can make that, I can always raise a family on that. So that's cool. And that's all I need. So I was thinking that far ahead, but kind of a little bit light, I guess. <laughs> and so I was just like, yeah, 35 grand is enough. Okay, cool. That's what I need. <laughs> and then fast forward to, to two or three years later. And I was like, no, that's going to have to be gnarly. So yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to have to make adult, adult, uh, yeah. size. Pay. I have a similar story with that. When I used to ride for giant bicycle, I just went in with the, 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 just a 20 year old kid thinking, Oh, I just need this and this and this to cover this. I'm cool. And they said yes right away. And, and now, yep. you know, looking back on that, I mean, I got hip to it pretty quick, probably like my third year in, my third contract negotiation. In, same, same. Really yeah. But um, looking back on that, I what they were paying at the time, um, or at least the rumors about what they were paying at the time, John Tomac, um, who was just dominating mountain biking, and, and you the same. I mean, you rode for Specialized. It was a huge – Palmer. It still, yeah. it still is a huge company. I mean, what they were – you know, the, the salaries they were paying their road racers or their – they're mountain bike guys. I mean, they probably looked at the BMX guys like, oh man, we're getting a great deal. But we probably, yeah, we probably could have both, both asked for double and received that. At least. At least. I love those stories because, well, it proves, it proves the mindset piece and the happiness piece. And don't get me wrong. I, I love for people to make a lot of money. I, I, who am I to like, go make as much as you want, but it does, you know, time of your life, right? Like you, you, you could have gotten paid more, but at the same time, at least at that time, it didn't matter. Like we were still happy because we were, we were doing yeah, what we wanted it, to do, making money doing it. Yeah, it really, it really didn't matter. I mean, that that the same goes for my television career too, man. It's like I've been getting lowballed my whole life, but I don't care because being rich is having free time to me. So, like, I'm having free time at 40 years old is. I, that's as rich as can be, you know? So it's like, I don't, <laughs> I don't even care about like, well, okay, cool. I'm getting low balled. So what? Like I knew Mira got double what I got my first season and, and Mira got double, but he like, he didn't, he instantly got a little bit weird with the, with the management, upper management and stuff like that. So they, everybody was going a different direction. He was over it. And he, you know, that's how I even got that job is calling Mira first and being like, Hey man, these guys want to give me this job. Are you, are you done with this for real? And he was like, yeah, dude, take it, take it, take it for sure. And I was like, okay. So then that was, that was how that went down. And he, he, you know, he told me what to ask for. And I did, they said, no, I said, okay. And then I just still kept going and right. it was like nothing. It was, it was so easy. And it's been 11 years or something crazy like that. Yeah, dude, almost 12. So you have to be, I mean, no offense, but I mean, you, uh, you have to be like one of the oldest people behind uh, on camera, excuse me, on, one sure. of the, on any of those MTV shows. No, for sure. Like, I, I don't even think, I don't even take offense to that. I'm like, awesome. You know, except for Kurt Loder, I guess, cause he's probably like 
he older. was an he was he was he was well into adulthood when we were in our twenties. Yeah, dude. So that guy was very. He's probably the oldest guy on MTV. And I looked at him I'm like, man, that that guy was badass. Like, I didn't have a problem with that guy being on there. Let me press rewind because I have a lot of questions in my head. You were coming up. You you told the story about how, you know, one thing led to another. Really, just kind of the chance staying at a buddy's house and then you meet these other guys and then you you ascend all the way up and now we're hosting shows but you're you're like doing some firefighting stuff and you're i mean what what's going on there what do you yeah like so like i I figure i'm helping people all the time anyway um and i've traveled in close quarters with people and had to be friends with them no matter what and had to you know and it's been like a lot of traveling, a lot of learning, a lot of seeing how the other side lives, both, both directions, you know, like I've flown on Lear jets and I've also taken taxi cabs in the, in the ghetto of New York city. You know what I mean? So it's like, I've been all around the world. And I think that, that, that kind of experience and that kind of empathy goes a long way. And I think that'll help uh, for me to be a professional helper to help people is is a calling that I've always had and I've always wanted to do. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to make it onto the fire department. Like I've been trying out for for three and a half, almost four years now, and it's real, real hard to get on. You know, because mm-hmm. there's there's five thousand people and there's fifteen spots. Wow. And I was super close last time to getting on, and I, I made it to the alternate list, and uh, I was the last alternate right there. One guy got hurt. I was in, and nobody got hurt. Or nothing which I'm glad about because I don't want to wish that on anybody. But uh, I was very, very close to being a firefighter, man. Very, very, very close. And I went through all my EMT school, EMT advanced, and now I'm like an EMT. I can be be one if I wanted to go work on an ambulance or, or do something like that, And which you never know. I might do something like that here and there when I'm home from doing shows and stuff. So what's the schedule like for from doing shows and when you're home? You said you have free time. Oh, that's the yeah. question. Now I remember. See, so you said time is the real wealth, right? Re- rich man. You, I really you, believe that, man. I, I really, really believe that. So this is the question I ask for, ask for most people. I think I know people. Your answer, but so would you ha- rather have more time or more money? No, more time for sure, because like depending on 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 where you're at in your life and what you're doing. But at the end of the day, like. Time is everything because if you have to go do something that you don't want to do for money, then you're going to be buying a bunch of stuff that you don't really need anyway. Because if you needed it, then you'd be doing it and having it. And I don't understand like what you need. I, what I need in my life, I have more than enough, way, way more than enough. So what I really need is just free time to do whatever I want and however I want and enjoy life. Because otherwise, what's it all for? You know, at the end of the day, you can't take it with you. So yeah, we you better have some fun. I was thinking about this today. I think about it a lot, probably like every other day. But it's an interesting world, especially the United States. And I went to school all the way. Um, but I I was brought up, and you go to school so that you can get into college, and then you go to college so that you can maybe have a career or job and then you do that and you get out and then you have a family and then you basically send them off to go do the same thing. And part of that seems a bit unnatural to me, which I think is why uh, I've revolted from even doing psychology the way most (laughs) psychologists do and probably why I raced BMX for as long as I did, because I felt like what you're saying with time, it's like, what, is the point, especially if it's something you don't want to do. It, I mean, I love the fact that people want to be doctors, want to be lawyers, want to be accountants, want to be HR professionals. I get that. But if it's something you don't want to do, because I work with a lot of people who do what they don't want to do, <laughs> like at yeah. a job, and it just seems, and then not only that, they, you know, they send their kids off to go do the same thing. And, oh man, there's just so much, uh, not to get negative, but there's a lot of disgruntled, frustrated people out there. And I'm just wondering what what's it all for? So you've seen well, that thing. That's the, I, I got that 
at 15 years old, bro. Like I was 15 when I realized that the only thing that mattered to me was free time. So that to me was the biggest blessing out of the whole thing was realizing what mattered to me at such an early age. Like, so I was 15 years old. I worked at a nuts and bolts factory here in Vegas. That was my first job. Well, my first job was the ice cream store at 15 and a half. So when I was 15 and a half, I worked at an ice cream store. And then when I was 15 and three quarters, I got into that. <laughs> the nuts, nuts and bolts factory. factory. Yeah. So I was doing both jobs. Oh, wow. And so, yeah. And I wanted to save up to buy a truck so I could go to the trails and not have to ride there every day. And then, you know, you have to have a truck to get the girls and everything else mm -hmm. because yeah, pretty much everything in my life. Dating sucks without a car. Yeah, and pretty much everything in my life was for chicks anyway. So, so then, <laughs> like, I was like, I was, that was the only thing out of it anyway. So then I realized, like, damn, I, I can't even ride. And that was the only thing that mattered was that bike, man. Like, that was it. And only because it was so fun. Like, because there was no X Games or no nothing like that when I was growing up, you know? There was no way that anybody knew that you could make a living on a bicycle. Like, Fuzzy was the closest thing to me that they could make a living on a bike and tight lines doing 360s and backflips and races. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. So, okay. So that, that's awesome. And maybe I'll be that guy. Cause I'm definitely not lighting the world on fire with my racing. I'm like, you know, I'm just like a little guy kind of, I'm just whatever. I didn't hit a growth spurt until 19. So I was just like, eh, whatever. I was just learning, just dealing with it. And then all of a sudden when I realized that free time is all that mattered, my life, became awesome because I didn't care about money. I didn't care about where I was getting it. I didn't care about what I was doing with it. And all I cared about was riding that bike, having fun. And what, if I had $6 in my pocket to go eat and, and had enough for me and my buddy, you know, that was enough. So you realized pretty early on that trading time for money was not an equitable position for you. Exactly. 100%. And then like, as I grew and as I got older, I, I've been realizing now that I'm 40, I'm like, dude, like I, I had it all along. I had, I had the passion for, for something. And that's exactly what you need is passion. And if you, if you have the passion for it, there is no possible way that you'll fail because you'll do it for free. So there you go. You know what I mean? You already won. Well, that makes negotiations a bit rough, though. They know you do it for free. No, 100% it does, but you know what? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Actually, I, I don't know if it will. I think I think it makes negotiations rough with the wrong people. But there I, you I, go. I think a great in, statement. In my opinion, because I felt like that with, with riding slash racing, that I would – well, I did because during the times I didn't have sponsorship, I, I invested in my own career and kept it rolling. Uh, and, and it turned back around. But I I do think that you do want to support the person who would do it anyway. You know what I mean? It's well, kind of like – They're, they're going to be the best at it, Jason, because at the end of the day, like you 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 want to go for a guy that, that will do it for free. Because if he does it for free, he's doing it because he loves it. If he loves it, then he'll do it on his time off. And if he's doing it on his time off, He's going to be a way better rider than the guy that's only doing it when he's getting paid and only doing the big stuff because he's getting paid or it's in front of somebody or whatever. You know what I mean? So it, it all makes real sense when you think about it. Like it all comes around and, and, and the more the guy rides the bike, the better he is, but the more he likes it. Uh, and she, there's some, there's some, some ladies out there ripping it up. Uh, I've been That's watching, true. Very I've, true. I've been watching. Yeah. Well, the racers, and then and now the freestyle side, dirt jumping, park, street, a lot of lot of everybody killing it out there. Which uh, I'd like to switch gears a little bit and talk about evolution, because when you were learning tricks, backflips, tail whips, knack knacks, whatever, there there wasn't a camp Woodward, there wasn't a foam pit necessarily, there wasn't a resi ramp, which is a which is a, a resin on top of a, a foam landing, so so it's a it's a softer landing if you go down for the non riders. These these kids today, they have all of this stuff. What do you think is good about it, and what do you think is bad about it? 
Well, I don't think there is a bad, um, you know, like safety to me is everything. Uh, they say that, 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 you know, we need to keep pushing the sports further and further and all that stuff. That is secondary to safety to me nice. because nice. I've been hurt a lot of times. So I understand what it's like to be hurt. I understand what you got to go through and it's not worth it. It's not, you know, my life has been the most amazing life there is. I'm very happy and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, I would never want my kid to go through what I went through or to want one of my friend's kids to go what I went through because it is such uh, uh, a long, bumpy, ups and downs road. And, and I am more than lucky, you know, like I have no idea how I got this lucky, but I did, you know, in preparation for the right opportunity, but definitely a lot more than that even. So it's, it's, it's something that I never would wish on anybody to, to go through what I went through to get where I'm at. So these people that are, that are discovering, you don't have to kill yourself to have fun or to be impressive like the nitro circus guys and, and, and Travis Pastrana and, and those boys, he's paid his dues as well, but he's also now, now he's making the sports better and safer, which I love. So, and I'm hosting that show for him. And it, like, that's a, another thing that I would do for nothing because, because that sport, like they're putting resis on all the landings. So I'm seeing guys go out there and do stuff that you could never even imagine that could be done on a bicycle is getting done. They're riding away. Perfect. And they could have done it on cement. No problem. But at the end of the day, they didn't because they crashed five times in practice and they still could ride, you know? So it was worth it. Do you think that some people or events take it too far? You don't have to name names or events? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think that, you know, it, it all boils down to what's cool or, or whatever. But I think that people that think that it's not cool or that it's, you know, whatever, they're scared. If you really wanted to break it down and chip away at it, everybody that says, that's not cool, that's not real BMX, that's not that whatever – they're scared to death of the future and what's coming along and what what they have to do if they're if they're still into it. But if you're a guy like like you know who like myself, I put my face I don't know how many times learning Superman seat grabs on dirt or learning Superman seat grab three sixties on dirt and like I, I've I've paid my dues and broken a lot of things and I appreciate the new stuff and and where it is and where it's going because I don't want to see anybody else go through the pain and the the misery of of a head injury or seeing your bones stuck in the dirt or anything like that you know what i mean so if 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 somebody that's never been hurt wants to go ahead and talk trash whatever then that's 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 a whole different deal i'm like yeah cool it's like white noise to me i can't even hear it i remember there was a time where there was some guys pushing the limp the limit i think um it might have it, well depends on who who their sponsors were at the time, but it, it almost seemed like to stay with that certain company, you kind of had to come up with some kind of stunt that year. But I look at stuff now, um, twenty years later, fifteen years later, whatever it is, and people have progressed so so much, and I think it's a direct result of having a safe place to learn and practice <laughs> versus just kind of like. You know, the law of attrition. You know, 10 of us are learning backflip no-handers, but only one of us actually survived because <laughs> through luck or whatever, because I was yeah, smart enough. Yeah, 100%. To put a down. That's exactly what it is, Jay. That's exactly what it is. Like, like it's, it's, it's all progressing so fast because, one, we, we invented the tricks and learned them. And, we, yeah, we did it on dirt. And it was very hard on our bodies. But at the end of the day, the, the new kids are starting with the tricks that we made up back then. So they're starting with the tail whips. And they're starting with the 360 tail whips. And they get to, like, learn how to do all that stuff in the foam pit before they ever take a crash. So it's, like, it's awesome. I love it. That's good. And it keeps people involved longer. I always ask a, a few of the same questions to everybody, kind of like a – Kind of like a lightning round, but um, you think you're ready? Yeah, of course. All right. So 
I think I know the answer, but I, instead of saying um, what's winning to you, I will ask you, what's your biggest win and your biggest loss? Let's think about this. Uh, probably the biggest loss that I've had is, is my dad. Um, but biggest win, mm, man, and we're talking about life, right? Life yeah, or period, life. Okay, life. So, life is <laughs> – I have to say it was probably like now that doing this interview, I think it might, might've helped me discover it, but is realizing what was important, you know, it was like realizing at, a, at an early age, what was important in life, which was your and time was, or which is your time. Yeah. It's, it's free time. And it's, it's like, you know, and staying sober and like knowing like that bad stuff can happen when you, I was just like born an old soul, you know? So like, I, I realized at, at a very young age that, that I didn't want to drink and didn't want to do things like that. And I never did. So like, I did, never got into it. That's, I just, I, that's probably why we always got along so well. Or, I mean, we haven't really like hung out that much, but I always, <laughs> I never did that stuff either. And, you know, people always ask me, you know, how'd you grow up professional athlete and traveling the world and you didn't party. And it's like, yeah, I partied. I just didn't drink or do any drugs. <laughs> so yeah. What, yeah. So what was your deal how did you know that wasn't for you before you tried it? Just to ask the hard question. Um, I, I, I really never, first of all, my dad was, a, he was an alcoholic. So I knew that was kind of a bad news. Okay. So that's a turn off. I saw him get his nose blasted off a couple of times. I was like, damn, I don't want to drink. So that, that checked that box for me. And then the drugs, uh, I just saw a bunch of friends and stuff like that do them. And, and I realized at a young age that, that, like drugs were, were were like they made you feel different than where you were, mm-hmm. and I don't like to feel different, and and I wanted to be in control, you know, like a little bit of a control freak when it comes to my my body or my 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 actions. Well, I'm gonna go a little psychological on you right now, but my guess is you didn't do that stuff because you liked who you were and how you were feeling. 95 to 99 percent of the time how about that i loved it yeah i loved it like sure. like there was nothing to medicate like what do you mean what's there to fix aren't we having fun yeah. i'm having fun that's good that that's that good. is that is kind of what it is i mean i remember being seven years old and and thinking like and i knew i was seven because i was like everything's in sevens for me i love seven i love the number seven my birthday's on the seventh i'm seven years old like everything was seven <laughs> So I remember thinking to myself, well, that's a lucky number. Man, I'm lucky. And then I go to my mom and I'm like, mom, I'm the luckiest kid in the world. She's like, what do you mean, TJ? And I'm like, no, I'm the luckiest kid in the world. Everything's seven with me. And she's like, okay. And because like in Vegas, seven, you know, lucky yeah, seven. yeah. everything's seven. And I'm like, I love life. And like, I would just say that. Like, I'll just be like, I love life. And I tell my mom that all the time, how much I love life. And so, yeah, I mean, that was basically that, it. And I thought we were, you know, we, my mom was a $30,000 dealer and we grew up in, in the desert. You know what I mean? So it wasn't like we were, we were loaded or anything. I just knew that we had free time and it was fun. And so I was like, man, life is awesome. It so, became, that, like, that's your you know, truth. You kept telling it to yourself. That was your truth. I love life. Yeah. So, yep. so how could you live a life that you don't love? Exactly. It's not even in the math. All not right. Even in the math. So next question, next question, go down the list, go down the list. So then what is winning to you now that you've had the, you had the career in sports. I mean, I forgot, we didn't even talk about your music, your productions. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but you're, so you're an artist on the bike. You're an artist off the bike. You're a, you're a television personality, air quote. Um, you, you seem to have made decent financial decisions with all your free time. So what's winning to you, man? I, I think I am winning. Like, I think no, that's you're winning. It. You're winning. That's just it. You know, like I, I, I really feel like I'm winning. I, I don't really, it, it, it's not even necessarily a competition, but if it was, I'd be winning. <laughs> so I don't know what, what competition it is. Well, that's a but, good, I'm glad you brought that word competition up. Because yeah. it, so, would you describe yourself as a competitor? 
You know, like Mira, oh, like yeah. you brought up Mira. Mira, like he he wanted to win. Like first place was he's, important he's for him. You know, the like, most competitive guy in the world. Right. Like I beat you, ha ha. Not in a bad way, but yes. that, that's how he rolled. Um, yep. But I don't get that vibe from you, and yet here you are. So yeah. I don't know, man. It's weird, Jason. Cause like sometimes I'll just be sitting here and I'll be like, man, I think I'm just going to go win this thing and I'll just go do it. And, <laughs> and, 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 and like, it's so crazy, but, but I feel like I want it. You know what I mean? It's like, if, it, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing good. Right. So mm-hmm. you want to do, do it good, whatever it is. And that's kind of why I, I got off the motorcycles and, 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 I haven't been riding BMX too much lately because I really don't want to take any more slams, but I know myself, I know that I'll go out there and I'll just be like, all right, let's do this. And I can just do some stuff that I really should do at this point in my life. Mm -hmm. And, and so, uh, you, you just, you think like, like if, if, if life were a competition, then I'm definitely in the run and I feel good about it for sure where I'm at and how I'm doing it and, and what I'm doing. And, and why I'm doing it. Okay. So what bad decisions do you enjoy making as a 40 year old man person? Um, I like to gamble on, on football sometimes. And I think that's a very bad decision, but cause I'm terrible at it, but it, <laughs> I, I enjoy it. And that's the only way I could watch football is if I have money on it. Got it. I don't really like it or at all. I don't care about it. Like, I have no team. I don't really like it. It is what it is. But if if I have money on it, every game is interesting. Does it matter so how much? I enjoy, yeah. It doesn't matter how much at all. No, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even – like I usually do – like maybe I'll bet 100 bucks in a weekend or something. Maybe. for for And that's putting in like – And that's all the four, games. Yeah, all the games, four or five cards. So like cards are like when you bet three three to five teams or seven teams and try and, you know, get like one, one card I had this weekend was a $20 card for $40,000 in victory. Like if you win is $40,000, it was Whoa. 15 teams. So if you can go 15 for 15, then you get $40,000. It was so funny. I was like, man, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever get bored? Very. Yes. Really? For sure. Um, yeah, but when I get bored, I just come in to my studio and I play the piano. Ah, uh, yeah, you're just it instantly yeah. fixes me. So, like, I love piano more than anything. I think. Can that's you like teach me a couple passion. chords? Because so my brother plays bass. Do you know my brother? Have you guys? I can't remember if you guys. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dream, yeah. Yeah. So he plays bass, self-taught. My sister can play like violin. And p- I. So here's my dream. I, I want to retire, even though I'm like. I don't care about retiring, but when I retire, I want to be a dude who can go into the piano, like a piano bar, and play for tips. But I can't play the piano. So do I. <laughs> yeah, but you can do that now. So yeah, I, I so, know. So you could just teach me like one or two things to where I could at least sit down and play the part, or at least give me something where it's like oh, I, I, I can easily. I can yeah, build I off can, of it because I, I teach you. I love music, like, and I, I can teach you you know, whatever I wanted to. And, oh, that's good. For sure. I could teach. If you have an ear for it, I could put you on it. No problem. That's good. Cause I, yeah, music is surprisingly technical. Um, but I do know that people who are good at it are highly intelligent. I teach you some stuff on the piano. No problem. That'd be sweet. That'd be sweet. Um, what is your advice for others coming up? Well, I want to say others coming up. So what would be your advice for somebody who's really pushing to get their time back. I mean, so that could be, that could be a kid in high school who's like, man, this sucks. Or it could be just, you know, average, average Joe, whomever, or it could be, you know, million dollar CEO guy. What's your advice for somebody who wants their time back? I'd say just prioritize everything. So like put, put, you know, is that Mercedes Benz, your number one priority or is going to your kid's softball game, your number one priority. It basically boils down to your priorities. Like what, what do you like to do? I like to go to Starbucks in the morning and hang out with 70 year old men. And so I go do that. And, and like, I like to go, I work out every single morning at 6am, you know, and I have a gym in my house here 
and we actually have members and built the whole whole entire business out of it. And and I got it all for my wife for her birthday, so she has a class to teach now, and everything's cool. And I just go out there and work out with them every day in the morning, just build a routine, and then I go to Starbucks and I call it work because I go to Starbucks and I just hang out and greet everybody, open the doors <laughs> for people that. I do. And I open the doors for people that maybe don't get doors open for them very often. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. man, I, I just, I just have a good time to say, hi, how are you doing? Good morning to as many people as I can. I'm the greeter. So yeah. I do that for about an hour, hour and a half. Then I come home, do whatever I need to do at home, whether it's kiss my wife or, or fix a light or do a honeydew, whatever it is. Then I go to lunch every day, this greens and proteins. Uh, you know, and eat, eat something healthy for lunch. And so then I, then I'm free after that. I'm free like at, you know, one to two ish. I'm free every day. And I figure out what, I, what I got to do that day. And, and I think that if you, and that's my priority. Those are, so when, when, when you called me, Jason, you were like, or when you texted me, you're like, Hey, can we do a thing? I'm like, yeah, of course. No problem. Done. I, and I go anytime after two, it's fine for me because I prioritized my day, you know, and I said, okay, cool. I'm, I'm Jason's after two today. So that's, that's, I'm going to go do my, I did my Starbucks, did my greens and proteins and did my stuff. Now I'm here and, and I'm in the studio silent. Everything's done and I'm having fun. That's exactly why I scheduled the time like that. So you just put it in your phone. If you're a CEO guy, Put it, put it in your phone that you're going to go play golf with your boys every single Sunday, no matter what, and you go do it no matter what. And then if, if it doesn't happen that month or that, that week rather, then change that to, to Monday and then pay all the dudes their salaries to make sure that they can come with you to golf because it's more important than that money that you would have made or whatever. And they have to pay their bills. So to take care of them. So I've done that plenty of times too. Like, paid my friend to hang out with me? No, because you want to have somebody not get hurt by hanging out with you. So I had somebody come out to, to visit me on my shoots and stuff like that several times. And I would have them come and, and I would have them do a tape run, which is like a no nothing job for my show that all you got to do is run tapes back to LA. Just don't mess that up. But they don't, they don't mess it up. They, they come out there and they run tapes back to LA. And that's something that you can't like, you can't replace that. And they get paid their, their week's wage for that. And it's awesome. That's good. So, that's like, good. Think about everybody. Think about their things and think about what they're going to do. But always, always, always take care of your time and take care of that. Whatever the time is like, we have a, we have a poker game here in Vegas, a poker game. Every first Thursday of every month, no matter what, if I'm in the country, I'm at Talker's house, which is my buddy. The poker game is 12 years old. Nice. And, and, and we've, we've never missed it. You know what I mean? I've only missed it when I've been out of the country. If I'm out of the country, then okay. But I'm never in town and missing it because I'm, that's a way to, to meet up with our boys. No matter what, we make sure that we're all together and that we are, we're there. And that's, that's time management, you know, and the, everybody does something different in, in that, in that group. You know, everybody's like a, like an insurance guy. We got like, we have different guys on every level, you know, mm -hmm. like one guy's a billionaire. His dad owns a, 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 a aerospace engineering, you know, thing. Yeah. Like one guy, is the, it's crazy. So it's awesome. But one guy, one guy makes, you know, 30, 30 grand a year. So it's great. But it, it's, it's a, it's, it's not money because it's $60 to buy in and you get free, free dinner. But it's it's not the money. It's the it's talking trash. It's having fun, and it's it's hanging with your boys. So, free time to me, man. Free time is the is the one and the, thing. And the way and me. the way to get it is to put it on. I call it the important list. I believe everyone achieves their goals. See, having goals is different than getting what you want, in my opinion. And I think I think everybody achieves their goals. They just may not be getting what they want and or need. And I and you nailed it with prioritizing because ultimately you do – people – things get done if it's on the important list. 
I mean, as a kid, yes. you know, as a kid, like my dad used to wake me up in the morning at like four and just say, it's trash day. And I'd be like, okay, I'll take out the trash. The trash didn't always get taken out. Why? Because it wasn't on my important list. <laughs> now, did it need to get done? Yes. Did I want to do it and not get in trouble? Yes, but it was never on my important list. I wanted to come home and watch TV. I wanted to come home and ride my bike. I wanted to come home and be on the phone. I wanted to come home and see if that number worked that that girl gave me. So it's all about putting what's really important on your important list. And what's one thing you wish everybody knew, every human being knew? Uh, I think every if, if every human being knew that kindness would get them something, then they would, they would practice it a lot more often. And so I, I didn't know it was going to get me something, but being kind to the, to everybody, whether it's your waitress or if it's your garbage guy, or if it's the CEO of a company or your kid or your kid is so important that, that it, it really does change your life because no matter what you feel good. Like you can't, you never heard anybody go and be the kindest person in the world having a bad day. Like, I, I don't get it. I like, I open the door for a lady and you don't hear her. Like she's, she, you don't, I don't, I don't cuss her out on her way in. No, no, it's a, it's a win for, for both sides. It's a win on both sides. Win. I do that all the time. I, I love, that's actually one of my favorite things to do is just stay by the door and, and keep yeah, it open too. for people. <laughs> it's too, super bro. fun. Like, it's so fun. And like people don't realize it. They're so caught up and they're so fast. And I'm, I'm like, one thing that, that maybe everybody could realize is that the sun is going to come up tomorrow. So you, you can handle it. It's okay. Just chill out a little bit. There we go. So we learned a lot. TJ, thank you very much for being a guest on the Gold Medal yes. Mindset. How can people find you? Where can they find you? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, at TJ Lavin on uh, social media platforms like uh, Instagram and Twitter and things like that, um, and Facebook, I guess, but I, mostly Instagram and Twitter. Um, and that's I mean, that's it. That just find me on there. And then if if you if you hit me up, then nine times out of ten, I'll hit you back. Well, there you have it. Multi multi time X Games gold, multi multi time world champion person, in my opinion. Thank you very much. Right on, Jay. Thanks, man. Thanks for taking the time to mind for gold on the Gold Medal Mindset Podcast. Let's keep the conversation going on Twitter at RealDrJRich or on the web at DrJasonRichardson.com. That's DrJasonRichardson.com. Take care and have a great day.